Ladies and gentlemen, that was Sinar Bahagia, a welcoming dance performed by Sri Indra Ratu Istana Maimun Medan, led by Dr. Randa Tengku Lisa Nelita. Applause for the group. By the way, that was a welcoming dance, which is a tradition in Malayu people. And they will bring the honored guests, the tepak siri, for them to touch, that we can find and see right now. And now I would like to welcome today's honored guest. First, the Consul, or the Head of Chancery, Consul General of Malaysia in Medan, Aziza Abdul Aziz. <laughs> Vice Consul at Consulate General of Japan in Medan, Asano Shunya. The Honorary Consul of Germany, Daniel Adiaksa Darmadi. <laughs> Honorary Consul of Timor Leste, Irwansha. <laughs> the expert staff of North Sumatra Governor, Agus Tri Priyono. <laughs> Deputy Chairman of Indonesian Hotel and Restaurant Association, Melki Waas. Deputy Chairman of Asita North Sumatra, Clement Gultam. <laughs> the Chairman of ASEAN Bilateral Committee, Chambers of Trade and Commerce, or Kadin, Parlindungan Purba. <laughs> the Head of Communications and Information Agency of North Sumatra, Elias Sitorus. The Director of the Voice of Indonesia, Soleiman Yusuf. The Director of RRI Medan, Agung Prasetyo Umar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's been an honor for us to present to you all the 43rd Diplomatic Forum organized by Voice of Indonesia, from Indonesia to the world. Today's event is live broadcast on our YouTube channel, VOI Indonesia, our Facebook fan page, The Voice of Indonesia, and our online streaming, voinews.id. And for the people in Medan, they can listen on 88.4 Pro 4 RRI Medan. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the Diplomatic Forum will be hosted by Daulat Pane and we'll be talking or discussing a topic, North Sumatra Tourism, Recover Stronger. <laughs> but before we continue, I would like to invite a finalist of Bintang Radio 2019 and she will sing one of the national songs in Indonesia, Tanah Airku. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tanah Airku by Sonia Tampubolon.
Ladies and gentlemen, before we start today's diplomatic forum, I would like to invite the director of Voice of Indonesia, Bapak Soleiman Yusuf. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh The Honorable Consul Head of Sensory Consulate General of Malaysia Ibu Azizah Abdul Aziz Honorary Consul of Germany Mr. Daniel Adiaksa Darmadi Vice Consul Consulate General of Japan Mr. Asano Sunya Deputy Chairman of the Association of the Indonesian Tours and Travel Agencies North Sumatra Mr. Clement Gultom Deputy Chairman of Hotel and Restaurant Association, North Sumatra, Mr. Melki. Honorary Consul of Timur Leste, Mr. Irwan Shah. Expert Staff on North Sumatra, Governor Dr. Haji Agus Tripriyono. Head of RRI Medan, my colleagues, Mr. Agung Prasetya. Head of Communication and Information, North Sumatra, Mr. Ilyas Sitorus. And Chairman of the Asian Bilateral Committee, Kadin, Mr. Parlindungan Purba. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin the show, I have a little story about VOI. Voice of Indonesia or VOI is a part of Radio Republic Indonesia that stand autonomously and focus in overseas broadcast. Established since 1945 with the name of Voice of Free Indonesia, we are tasked to uphold Indonesia diplomacy and spread the news on Indonesia's independence. So, the momentum of Indonesian independence can be heard to Egypt, India, Netherlands, and other parts of the world. In 1950, the Voice of Indonesia officially changed its name into Voice of Indonesia, and today, we are broadcasting in nine languages, such as Indonesia, Arabic, Mandarin, English, France, Germany, Japan, Spanish, and Dutch. Through the diplomatic forum, which has been held since 2011, VOI also takes on a role as a medium for empowerment and advocacy, as well as a medium for growing awareness and sense of belonging to Indonesian culture. As well, as well as functioning as a second track diplomacy. For this 43rd edition, Diplomatic Forum is present in Medan, North Sumatra, with the theme, North Sumatra Tourism Recover Stronger. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's begin the show. I am Soleiman Yusuf, voice of Indonesia, from Indonesia to the world. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello. This is Voice of Indonesia. We are part of Radio Republic Indonesia. Every day, we make sure news and information about Indonesia. We'll reach you wherever you are. Things that you can listen and you can watch with our cutting edge equipment. Everything about Indonesia in nine languages. Our top event. Diplomatic Forum. News Forum. Live Interview. This is us. Voice of Indonesia, from Indonesia, to the world. Thank you very much, Bapak Soleiman Yusuf, for the warm welcome remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, in this diplomatic forum, please feel free to join in our dialogue by presenting your questions directly to our speakers later. But one thing, please turn off your phones or put it on silence so that, well, it doesn't get into our mics. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call today, today's host of the Diplomatic Forum, Daulat Pane. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Daulat Pane is a senior journalist of The Voice of Indonesia. He was assigned at KBS for two times in 2006 and 2015 covering various national and international events, both in Indonesia and abroad. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Diplomatic Forum. RRI World Service, Voice of Indonesia, presents Diplomatic Forum. A talk show analyzing strategic issues and global perspectives. Well, 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 well. Thank you very much, Steve. Steve will be my co-host in this afternoon. Are you ready, Steve? Of course. Don't say no. Well, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, Today, our diplomatic forum, as Steve already says, that is going to discuss a topic on Lord Sumatra tourism recover stronger. Respect that. And this diplomatic forum is live broadcast on YouTube at Voice Indonesia and also Facebook, The Voice of Indonesia. It can also be accessed through our live streaming www.voinews.id I repeat www.voinews.id You can also join this program by sending your comments as Steve says then, or questions in via our Facebook fan page The Voice of Indonesia and Voice of Indonesia And this program is also broadcast live by RRI Pro 4 Medan on 88.4 FM. Thank you for our friends from Medan. 
Give applause. Thank you very much. And to discuss this, I would like to invite to come to the stage our honorable guest. First, I would like to invite Council and Head of Sensory Council General of Malaysia in Medan, Ms. Aziza Abdul Ajiz. And I would like also to go invite to come to the stage Vice Council, Councilor General of Japan in Medan, Mr. Asano Sunya. Next, I would like to invite another Council of German, Bapa or Mr. Daniel Adiaksa Dermari. And the Deputy Chairman of the Indonesian Hotel and Restaurant Association, Mr. or Bapa Melki Was. And the Deputy Chairman of the Association of the Indonesian Tours and Travels Agencies of North Sumatra, Bapa Clement Gultom. And on the floor we have another council of Timor Leste, Bapa Irwansa. Welcome. And also North Sumatra expert staff, Bapa Dr. Andus Haji Agus Tri Priyono. Welcome Bapa. And also head communication of and information of North Sumatra, Bapa Ilya Sitarus. And also together with us this afternoon. Head of RRI Medan, Bapa Agung Prasetya, and also Chairman of the ASEAN Bilateral Committee, Bapa Parlindungan Purba. Selamat datang, Bapa. Welcome. And the most important one, or this is also very important. This afternoon, we have the guest from the Listeners Forum of RRI. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we start this talk show, this forum, I would like to invite Mr. Sandiaga Uno, our Tourism and Creative Economy Minister, to have his speech. And here is his speech. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Warmest greeting to you all. The Honorable Government of North Sumatra. Head of Public Broadcast of the Radio of the Republic of Indonesia for Overseas Broadcast, the Honorable Foreign Representative for North Sumatra. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my sincere apologies for not being able to attend such a terrific event in person. I highly appreciate the Radio of the Republic of Indonesia for successfully creating a forum in which potentials can be introduced to then be developed in the international arena. With its cultural and natural resources, as well as local creativity, the province is ready to shine the stage of international tourism. Thus, the importance of accelerating the tourism and creative economic development of the area. The Ministry plans to induce greater resiliency in North Sumatra through a number of collaborative programs with locals and other relevant stakeholders. These programs have become a stimulant for local tourism development, job creations, and creative business opportunities to improve their durability and agility. Recalling the previous progress, Danau Toba was indeed one of the prominent super priority destinations. Therefore, the Ministry acknowledged and greatly support the 43rd 
diplomatic forum of the radio of the Republic of Indonesia with high hopes. May the fruitful discussions provide pathways for North Sumatra to fulfill its potentials towards becoming one of Indonesia's international tourism destinations. Mauliate Godang, thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ahoy, yahoo. Give applause for, for Pak Sandiaga. Yes, uh, we really invited him to come to this forum in person to meet our honorable panelists, speaker today, but as we know that Pak Sandiaga is very busy today to make our tourism and creative economy move forward and getting better and better. Sorry for that, Pak Clement Gultom. And on the video, we also invited the governor of North Sumatra, Bapak Edi Rahmayadi, to come in person to this forum, since he is also very busy today. So he sent us a video for his speech, and here is the speech. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Hadirin sekalian yang saya hormati, izinkan saya, Edi Rahmayadi, Gubernur Sumatera Utara, menyampaikan beberapa hal khususnya terkait sektor pariwisata yang tengah menjadi concern kami di Provinsi Sumatera Utara ini. Sejalan dengan dibukanya pintu perbatasan negara serta penerbangan internasional, pemerintah Provinsi Sumatera Utara terus berupaya untuk meningkatkan promosi wisata termasuk mengembangkan tempat-tempat wisata baru di Sumatera Utara. Menurut data Badan Pusat Statistik pada Agustus 2022 yang dibandingkan Agustus 2021 yang lalu telah terjadi peningkatan kunjungan wisatawan mancanegara yang cukup signifikan ke Sumatera Utara. Hal ini tentunya menunjukkan bahwa mereka percaya bahwa negara kita, khususnya Sumatera Utara, sudah aman dari COVID-19. Bertambahnya angka kunjungan wisatawan ke Sumatera Utara tersebut juga tidak terlepas dari perhelatan yang telah dilakukan oleh pemerintah pusat, provinsi maupun daerah bersama instansi lainnya termasuk pertemuan Women 20 di Parapat pada bulan Juli yang lalu. Danau Toba telah ditetapkan sebagai salah satu dari lima destinasi wisata super prioritas selain memiliki panorama alam yang luar biasa indah adat budaya masyarakat di sekitarnya juga sangat eksotis hal ini tentu menjadi kekayaan Sumatera Utara yang menjadi magnet untuk mendatangkan wisatawan ke daerah ini saya berharap Penyelenggaraan Diplomatik Forum oleh Lembaga Penyiaran Publik Voice of Indonesia di Kota Medan dengan tema North Sumatra Tourism Recover Stranger akan dapat menyebarkan informasi yang sebenarnya tentang Sumatera Utara khususnya sektor pariwisata dan UMKM-nya ke dunia agar wisatawan asing lebih banyak mengunjungi daerah ini. Saya ucapkan terima kasih buat LPP RRI Voice of Indonesia, RRI Medan dan para narasumber dalam acara ini semoga berjalan dengan lancar 
dan sukses. Terima kasih. Wabillahi taufik wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Um Santi, Santi, Santi Um. Shadu, Shadu, Shadu. Salam kebajikan. This diplomatic forum is brought to you by RRI World Service, Voice of Indonesia. Well, please give a big applause for us here in this room. Thank you very much. Both Pak Sandiaga Uno and the government of North Sumatra, Pak Edi says that the recent move, an increase of visiting, especially from the foreign tourists to North Sumatra. Since we have here Pa Gultong and Pa Waas, I would like to confirm this to both of you because you are very intimate in quotation with the tourist flow to North Sumatra. To Pa Waas first from uh, PHRE, Hotel and Restaurants Association. What are the drivers of increasing the foreign tourists to North Sumatra based on your experience? Please, Pawas. Uh, uh, sorry, Pawas. Uh, for the other uh, panelists later, while you are checking your microphone, it is better you say, check, 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 one million, two million, three million, <laughs> then knocking the mic. So thank you very much. Just so. <laughs> uh, the short mm -hmm. answer for that is we are emerged. But uh, we have to deal with other obstacles, such as uh, the inflation, the rising of the airline fare ticket, and licensing uh, changing. Uh, it may cause uh, complicated to the economic, and it's quite complicated. Uh, the number, but the number we can use for that uh, emerging is pra, before the pandemic is 30 percent emerge. 20 percent. 30 percent. 30 percent increase. Okay. So there is a 30 percent increase before the pandemic. From before the pandemic, so it missed it before uh, 2019. 2019. 19. 20. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Pak Gultom? One million, two million. Yeah, <laughs> Pak Gultom, more than one million, two <laughs> million. You can check her po uh, his pocket now. Yes, Pak okay, Gultom? Um, okay. uh, for the tourists that come to North Sumatra especially, actually, uh, since the loosen of the regulation in uh, health protocol in Indonesia, yes. March 2020, 22, I mean, uh, the materialization of people that visiting North Sumatra is greatly increased. But, this is a big but, yeah. Uh, there are people that supposed to travel within 2020, made their bookings, purchased their tickets, Okay. Everything pre-arranged, pre-organized. They are ready to go. They already full paid or maybe half paid or booking fee. But then since the pandemic hit the world and everyone, you know, every country closed their borders, then everything has to be forgotten for over two years. Mm -hmm. So the tourists that coming through the travel agents to the tour operators in North Sumatra for the time being, mostly coming from those people that canceled the trip two years ago. So there is no business at all. I can say that. Okay. There is new bookings. There are new bookings, but significantly, there are people that redated 
their journey to Indonesia. That's what is in reality. Thank you. Okay. Pa Waas, Pa Gultong, since we have Pa Daniel, Ibu Aziza, and also Pa Asano here from Japan, from Malaysia, and Germany. So I believe there should be tourists from these three countries to visit North Sumatra. Am I right? Pa Clement. Oh yes, 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 of course, of course. Every week now, I saw Malaysian playing golf. Golf. It's, it's golfers coming from Malaysia. They are sick and tired of a golf course in Malaysia, maybe, <laughs> and they need <laughs> uh, new things. They need a uh, new atmosphere. So Medan offers good golf courses here. So okay. uh, every weekend, sad, uh, Friday night until Sunday night. Of course, beside golf, they also are enjoying the cuisines. Yes. You know, it's a gastronomic attraction of North Sumatra. It's very good. Even though they call it Nasi Padang, it is Medan, you know. Okay. <laughs> so is it, is it Nasi Padang or Nasi Lemak? No, it is Nasi, nasi Padang. Is yeah. it? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I have to tell you that in, in Medan, yes. there is only one or two good food, in fact. What are they? But the other ones, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Father Clement. And I also would like to welcome, say welcome to the Council of Consulate General of Malaysia in Medan, Bapa Ayub Omar. Welcome, Bapa. <laughs> yes, for Ibu Aziza, since Father Clement said that. Test, test. There must be tourists from Malaysia to visit North Sumatra. So, um, may I know what actually attracts the Malaysian people come to uh, to to North Sumatra uh, besides uh, playing golf and trying nasi padang, as Pak Clement said. Thank you, Pak Alat. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Voice of Indonesia for inviting us here today. And uh, of course, being the only flower among the Beatles, if I translate that correctly. <laughs> Give I feel applause, so please. Not only I represent Malaysia, but also the ladies out there, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, actually what uh, Bapa has mentioned earlier, it makes my a bit uh, easier for me to narrate. Uh, so guilty as charged, um, tourists from Malaysia comes into Indonesia. In fact, we are number one uh, tourists that come here among the top 10 mm -hmm. and even for North Sumatra. And uh, for Indonesia tourists coming into Malaysia also, uh, we know the number is high. And uh, for your info from Malaysia coming into North Sumatra alone, after the opening of borders in January to July 2022, uh, we have around 8,231 uh, tourists as compared to 2021, which is only 64 during the lockdown. So that shows even during the lockdown period, there are still nations making their way here into the country and specifically to North Sumatra. And back to your question, uh, Pak Daulat. I'm actually uh, envy him for moving around, whereas I have to stick here, you know, being calm and composed. You can move <laughs> around. That's the beauty of being a moderator. You get the point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, if you ask me what attracts Malaysian to come here, of course, number one is food. Among, among, I wouldn't say number one, but of course, for me, it will be cuisine and culinary. Uh, and the second one, of course, uh, the other aspects such as uh, connectivity, hence these are all the providers comes in, for example, uh, travel agencies and also from the flight providers. Uh, good connectivity and affordable flights and accommodation here in Indonesia makes it more attractive for tourists, especially from Malaysia to come in. And the second one, I would say the closeness in culture. Meaning to say it's not something so foreign, but of course something I could, I could relate to, but at the same time, I'm in a foreign country, whereas I could see the beauty of it. If in uh, Malay, we're going to say sama tapi tak serupa. Similar, but uh, not the same, of course. Uh, the third one, of course, uh, as a Muslim, I would say the guarantee of halal, halal uh, food, food over okay. here, certification, which is as good as what we have in Malaysia, Jakim and so on. Uh, and the, 
I would I believe the fifth one would be uh, something to do with communication or language barrier. Not so much of uh, Malaysian couldn't speak uh, other languages, but more of uh, the closeness of what we have in Malaysia. And then when we come into Indonesia, we still could speak our language, but at the same time, this is something that we could uh, explore as compared to what we have in Malaysia. So uh, to sum it up, uh, those are the aspects that we are coming okay. here. Okay. Thank you, Bu Aziza. So we have to thank a uh, Malaysian Park Lam and Guldong and also was so thanks for the pro the, the connectivity for the travel agents and also hotel operators. That's a magnet for tourists from Malaysia to come to 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 know. Maybe Sumatra. I have to add something that please you know pe people in around the world they stay every day in their comfort zone. Yes, every day routinely the same time of wake up, same time of breakfast, you know, mostly. So Malaysians coming to Indonesia, they are not coming out from their comfort zone <laughs> because they, we, they have similarity. <laughs> that's, what, that's why okay. Malaysia always keep on the top of the line. Thank you, Park Lemon. Okay, the same questions will go to pa Daniel. So. We believe also there also should be Germanies to come here, right? So what attracts them to come? Okay, check, check. Oh, hello. Uh, thank you. F first of all, thank you so much for the flat this platform from Voice of Indonesia. Um, uh, regarding the tourists from Germany, used to be there are a lot of German people coming to Indonesia, um, but during the pandemic, it's getting more or less and it's very sad to us to see mm -hmm. about that. Um, but hopefully, after all this pandemic, the uh, tourists uh, from Germany will be increased, and they uh, like to see Indonesia or to visit Indonesia. Actually, most of them about nature. nature. They like to see the nature. For example, at the Bukit Lawang, they want to see the orangutans. Mm -hmm. they uh, German people like to hiking and like to and uh, exploring all the jungle probably here in North Sumatra yeah, and okay. not only that some of the German uh, like to see um, or like to do activities just like uh, surfing they will go to Nias probably as yes, an so island uh, it's well known here in North Sumatra and, and also for the culture they would like mm -hmm. to see the real culture of indonesia yep. okay thank you for daniel steve wait okay <laughs> let me one more question to pa asano okay be patient okay <laughs> the same questions pa asano <laughs> check check uh konnichiwa uh, konnichiwa sama sore ya suda so regarding the question, uh, there were, uh, of course, Indonesia is uh, one of the favorite, uh, uh, favorite uh, tourism de destination for Japanese people. And then before uh, the spread of pandemic, there were around 500,000 Japanese tourists visiting to Indonesia, and, es uh, and especially in Bali Island. And from the other side, there were around 400,000 Indonesian tourists uh, visit, uh, visiting to Japan mm -hmm. before the pandemic. So this is uh, quite a high number when we compare compared to other nations, other countries. And um, and of course, uh, for Japanese uh, tourists, Bali is favorite uh, destination. Mm -hmm. And North Sumatra province, I have to emphasize that North Sumatra province has much more uh, uh, beautiful sceneries and, uh, uh, and delicious food here. And personally, I have been to uh, Danau Toba yeah. uh, twice, actually, with the uh, ambassador of Japan. And it was very, uh, I, I saw very beautiful sceneries out there. And I think hospitality, hospitality in North Sumatra province is very exceptionally, uh, exceptionally uh, good compared to other, uh, other countries, I guess. So I hope uh, there are more uh, tourists coming in into Japan. And, and on the other side, Japanese, I hope uh, Japanese uh, tourist people uh, will uh, visit um, more uh, beautiful uh, uh, sceneries in uh, North Sumatra province. Yeah, that, that's my comment. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. So from our panelists, from um, our speakers, 
in this forum, we, we know that North Sumatra is really beautiful. It is a magnet for people to come. But let Steve continue this, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw it at me, please. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, before I ask the panelists, I would like to tell again to the audiences that you can present your questions directly. Who knows when you ask them, they will give you free ticket to their countries. Will you give them? Oh, really? No. Really? <laughs> 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 I'm really sorry about that. So actually, you've mentioned how North Sumatra is very attractive to the people in German, Malaysia, and also in Japan. But I'd like to know, um, what is the current tourism trend for the local people in Germany, Malaysia, and also in Japan that maybe can, that we can, how do we call it? Just say share. Share, yeah, or share, maybe yeah. replicate in here so that they yeah. will be attracted to come here. Yes. Thank you. We start from Ibu Aziza. Ibu Aziza. Uh, yes. Thank you. The star. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so of course, uh, when we mention about what attracts Malaysian to come here just now, uh, the, the number one would be nature's uh, beauty of North Sumatra, mm -hmm. just to, to add on to what I mentioned earlier. Okay. So uh, the question is about what we have in Malaysia that could be the shared here, right? Yeah, the current, trend, uh, the current tourism trend that is happening in your country. I see. Thank you so much. Uh, so basically, the current tourism trends, I would say, uh, it, it is hard without not mentioning this because 80% from the tourists that comes into Malaysia is for the purpose of medical tourism. So that itself is one of the aspects that I think Malaysia has found its niche. Uh, and, and in fact, we are proud to be after our efforts for 10 years and our healthcare providers are among one of the best, uh, I would say, in the region. And of course, we are tr striving to be one of the best in the world. Uh, so if you ask me what kind of uh, other as aspect, of course, we also offer nature's beauty that uh, tourists from um, international tourists could enjoy. And, and of course, there are other efforts such as we package it with perhaps a shopping spree and of course golf courses and also cuisine of course that are those are some of the things that on top of my head uh, we could be proud of and could share uh, with others uh, that are watching uh, today's show okay shopping spree eh indeed <laughs> indeed. <laughs> indeed indeed okay steve who will be the next the next uh, I, this is a question to the three the from german also from japan okay pa asano First? Yeah, Pasa, Pasa, no. First. Okay, um, in my opinion, uh, I think Japan is very famous for uh, having a sophisticated, uh, sophisticated technology of infrastructure or medical uh, field, I guess. So I think this is uh, one of the uh, assets that we can, uh, we can utilize in order to attract more people from uh, around the world. And I think uh, and the collaboration that can be enhanced between Indonesia and Japan in this, in this uh, field is that uh, we, can, uh, we can provide more uh, packages, uh, like tourism packages to Indonesian people. That we, so Indonesian people will more uh, be attracted to uh, visiting Japan and doing their uh, sightseeing uh, and maybe visiting uh, many uh, traditional places like Kyoto, and Nara prefecture, and I, and we have also a lot of uh, beautiful uh, sceneries like Mount Fuji, and uh, cherry blossoms like sakura, and also uh, very delicious food, so, uh, food too. So I hope uh, many uh, Indonesian people will uh, visit to Japan and uh, enjoy this uh, 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 this uh, this time in the future. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you very much. So there will be a special packages for Indonesians. Hello, Indonesians behind me. Do you hear that? You want a special package from Japan? <laughs> they are too honest, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> also, actually from Malaysia, there is uh, the word medical from Japan, medical from um, Germany. How is it? Yeah, from Germany, actually, uh, the medical tourism also very uh, interesting because German has the also the best or uh, one of the best uh, the medical health care so with the, uh, all the advanced technology that we have and also the reputation regarding the medical experience and um, that also from the medical history so Germany also a lot of uh, tourists come to Germany to do their medical checkup for example you know, and other things also, Germany has a lot of scenery, 
Bavaria, Lower Saxony, all, all the places that you can visit. And also in winter. They like, I, I know a lot of Indonesian like snow. So please come to us in winter also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, snow, okay, snow. We have snow in Bekasi. Mm. Oh, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's another planet, sir. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> joking. We, back to you. We also have snow in Cibubu, right? <laughs> please do not mention that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Steve. Yeah. Back to you now. Okay, so Pak Clement. Hello. <coughs> yes, Pak Clement. <laughs> <laughs> They're having their own show, sir. I know. He's counting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, by the way. So, um, talking about number, as you mentioned before, Pak Clemens, that the visitors to North Sumatra are those who were already in, in quotation, waiting list in 2019, 20, 2020. Am I right? Yes, that's right. yes. That's right. So, let's counting number. What about your customers from Japan, Malaysia, and Germany? If you can tell us the story about that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is a very interesting question. Uh, I am here representing the association of uh, tours and travels companies, but the questions uh, the question just now thrown to me is, what is my company? So, uh, let me answer that. Um, my company is Boraspati Travel, is the only, the solely player for serving. So, when I was built um, serving in, the, in the, the early 90s in Nias, I was the founder of Nias Surfing Club because I serve myself, but then, then uh, we finally get into uh, some uh, competition that we held with the government, helping by the government, central but government. Even but do you still that. serve now? Pa I Clement? am still serving in it. Okay, very yeah, good. But not as frequent as before. I, I, I'd rather to go in on land now. I, I go dirt biking now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Boraspati is uh, spe sp has specialty in adventure and special interest. So, most of of the beaten tracks are uh, provided by Boraspati. This is the only service. That's why during the pandemic, during the middle of the pandemic in 2020, September to the until now. The serving people is the most bulletproof people that not uh, really, really uh, affected by what you call uh, lockdown. As long as they see there is a hole, a tiny hole, they can get in, even though there, there is a, an obligation of quarantine from five, day, three, five days change to three days and then to go to seven days, they still go there. They go on, on and they quarantine in a five-star hotel. So, but also uh, we have to be, uh, I have to be very frankly that the surfers coming into Indonesia during the pandemic is the rich one, the rich ones. The rich one. And th this is really, really uh, weird, not weird, yeah, it's strange because the, the, the Special interest travelers or tourism, they don't care about the price because it is a hobby. It is not. It is not just a hobby. It is a lifestyle. So surfing is not a sport anymore. It is a lifestyle. From their tongs, their sandals, their pants, everything must be serving, all branded. And this is it. They live in the beach. They go to the beach. They work in the office, but they finally, after the work, they go to the beach. And then Indonesia is blessed is, uh, as an archipelago in the world, as the best surfing paradise. Really the best surfing paradise. Just in, in Mantawa itself, it's more than 40, more than 45 surf breaks. Wave, yeah, yes. to surf. In Nias, it's 15. 
mm-hmm. in Bali, name it in Bali, yes. in Lampung, in uh, Nusa Tenggara, West Nusa Tenggara, East Nusa Tenggara. Okay, Even sorry, Pak Clement. I just, the point is that your customers from Japan, Japan, uh, Malaysia, and uh, Germany. Japan, uh, the ma- the main customer from Japan is not for surfing, <coughs> but for fishing. 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 Anglers from Japan still related to the sea, right? Uh, yeah, Serving it, 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 and it is game fishing. <laughs> yes, game fishing. Yeah, game fishing. <laughs> and okay. uh, unfortunately, Malaysia doesn't have enough uh, special interest uh, tourists that come to Indonesia because we are in the same comfort zone. We are in the same world, okay. tropical country. But German, yes, there are some German surfers, cyclists, cyclers, photography. Mm. You know, they come to Indonesia just to do that. Okay, thank yes. you. Okay, um, I would like to go back a little bit to what uh, Ibu Aziza, the flower of the forum this afternoon, about the connectivity. But these questions will go to Bapak Agus, yeah, uh, the expert, expert staff of North Sumatra. While we are talking about connectivity, it is not about just air connectivity, like uh, Ibu Aziza mentioned now, uh, just now, uh, airplane, airline, but also land connectivity, infrastructure. I believe those things are also very welcome. Pa. Uh, we have uh, a just arriving guest. Yeah. Okay, Pagus. Um, sorry. Uh, so, how prepared, or would you have tell us about the real condition of infrastructure in North Sumatra? Please. Check check. Mohon maaf, pakai bahasa Indonesia. Saya sampaikan. Steve will translate, or I will translate. It is used better still. Okay. Provinsi Sumatera Utara merasa beruntung. The Diberi- province of North Sumatra feels so lucky. Diberikan anugerah yang luar biasa oleh Allah Subhanahu wa taala dengan tempat yang sangat indah. Given the beauty the blessing from the God Almighty with a very beautiful place. Kita ketahui bahwa sektor pariwisata adalah sektor yang paling terdampak di pandemi Covid. We knew that tourism is the one of the sectors that is hit the worst by the pandemic. Karena sektor ini membutuhkan pergerakan manusia dari satu tempat ke tempat yang lainnya. Because it requires people's mobility. Tetapi pandemi COVID juga memberikan pelajaran kepada pemerintah provinsi Sumatera Utara. But it also gives lesson to the government of North Sumatra. Keterikatan selama ini di infrastruktur. Bisa kita perbaiki di masa pandemi. The underdevelopment in infrastructure can be improved during the pandemic. Saat ini ada beberapa bandara, bandar udara yang sedang kami persiapkan sehingga di tahun 2023 bisa dioperasionalkan. We are preparing several airports that in 2023 can be operational. Salah satunya adalah bandara Sibisa yang ada di kota Parapat. One of them is the Sibisa Airport in Parapat City. Di samping itu juga ada beberapa ruas jalan tol yang sedang dipersiapkan. Besides that we also have some new toll roads under development. Seperti jalan tol dari Medan sampai Indrapura, such as the toll road from Medan to Indrapura, dari Medan sampai ke Tanjungpura, from Medan to Tanjungpura. Dan dari Medan sampai dengan kota Pematang Siantar, from Medan also for, to Pematang Siantar, ini akan bisa dioperasionalkan di akhir, akhir tahun ini dan di pertengahan tahun 2023. They can be operational in the end of this year and middle of 2023. Dengan tersedianya infrastruktur ini, mudah-mudahan turis yang datang ke Sumatera Utara dapat menjangkau tujuan wisata dalam tempo yang lebih cepat. With this infrastructure, that we hope that the tourists can reach those destinations in short time. Tetapi yang tidak kalah penting juga adalah bagaimana kita memberikan pelajaran kepada es- sumber daya manusia yang bergerak di sektor pariwisata. Another important thing is that the 
manpower of this sector. Saat ini pemerintah Provinsi Sumatera Utara juga sedang melatih para pelaku pariwisata yang ada di tempat tujuan sehingga dapat siap menerima kunjungan wisatawan mancanegara. The North Sumatra government is training the tourism actors so that they will be ready when the tourists are coming. Dan yang tak kalah penting adalah masalah budaya Sumatera Utara yang perlu diberikan pemahaman bahwa sektor pariwisata ini membutuhkan budaya melayani. And also in terms of culture that in this tourism sector we need the culture of service. Sehingga kita tidak kalah dengan Bali dan Jawa Barat serta kota-kota lain yang sudah lebih unggul di sektor pariwisata. So we will not stay behind Bali, West Java and other places that is well top destinations. Pemerintah Provinsi Sumatera Utara tentu berharap dukungan dari semua pihak sehingga sektor pariwisata ini dapat segera bangkit sesuai dengan tema pada hari ini adalah recover stronger. So the government of North Sumatra hopes there will be support from all people so that the tourism in North Sumatra just like the theme of the day's event can recover stronger. Demikian disampaikan. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Pak Agus. Thank you, Steve, for helping me. Yes, from the panelists and also from Pak Agus, we have listened to that Danau Toba or Lake Toba Parapat is one of the magnet that this province has to be, in quotation, sold to the tourists to come to North Sumatra and who has not heard about the beauty of Danau Toba or Lake Toba which is one of the five super priority tourist destinations and the beauty of Lake Toba is perhaps no longer stranger to anyone's ears I believe that million hundreds of millions of people out there know or ever heard about Lake Toba or Danotoba. And this massive lake is not only home to the old inspiring natural wonders, but also to the cultural heritage. We have culture in uh, Danotoba or in, in, in uh, Lake Toba in Parapat. What is that? The Batak people who do not know how nice, how polite is Batak people, how harmless is Batak people. That's not because I'm Batak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Oh Tau Toba is a song, Haholongadku, uh, or uh, it, we translate in, uh, to English, Oh Lake Toba, my love. And this beauty, the beauty of Lake Toba, is already inspiring someone to make it into a song entitled Oh Tautoba and this song will be sung by Sonia Tampubolon. Hello, Mark. 
Big applause. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Are you single, Sonia? 
<laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> but, but <I'm> not. <laughs> This diplomatic forum is brought to you by RR World Service, Voice of Indonesia. Yes, thank you very much, Sonia. And Steve, where are you? I'm here, sir. Oh, you Just are there. Just one looks like foreigner here. That's yep. me. Anyway, now we have one of the audience who want to ask a question. You stop typing your phone? You ready to, one to ask the question? Oh, we have questions from the floor? Yeah, we have one question from the floor. Please stand up, state your name, and also where you are from. We do not need your zodiac, by the way. Hi, uh, my name is Alia Cynthia Gabena. I'm from. Excuse me. My name is Alia Cynthia Gabena. Aliana. Yeah. Okay. I'm Maybe from you can open your mask so that it can oh. be more clear. Okay. Just for a moment. After that, you can put it on again. Will that be difficult? No. Okay. Help her. Yeah. Steve. Finally, we can see a prettier face right now. Please. Is it too? Steve, is it too difficult? Her. Yeah. I cannot touch people, you know. Okay, I believe that. <laughs> okay. So, what's the question? Once again, the name, please. Uh, many countries over tourist destination for millennial and generation Z. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of destination does Indonesia over, especially for us, the millennials and the generation Z? Yeah. yeah so. Thank you. So these questions will go to, to Pak Sano, Ibu Aziza, and also Pak Daniel, right? To Malaysia, German, or Japan. Is it uh, Indonesian tourist uh, to foreign countries or foreign tourists to Indonesia? Malaysia. Oh, Ibu Aziza. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. okay. Ibu. <laughs> yeah, boleh duduk. Yeah, yeah, you can sit down again. Do you get the point, Bu Aziza? Um, thank you, Bu Alia, Alia yeah, tadi. Yeah. Okay. Bu Alia, if I uh, heard her correctly, it's something about uh, the millennials and how uh, we as a country could uh, provide some of tourist uh, attractions for these young millennials. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Bu Alia, for the questions. Interesting, because as a teenagers or the youngsters, definitely tourism is one of the aspects that uh, we would like to explore on. So if you ask me about the tourist that uh, touristic uh, aspect that Malaysia has to offer, I would say one of it is uh, the the aspect of coming into Malaysia and then you know that it's affordable for you as a student to spend in Malaysia. Not only for the accommodation, there's a range of choices that you could, could choose from um, and also for you to spend, if uh, be it for food or other uh, aspect like uh, you want to try something out. Um, of course, for millennials, if I could just uh, generalize, some of them might come to Malaysia for uh, for fun. So fun could be interpreted individually. Either you come for uh, for you to enjoy our theme park in Malaysia, or if you want to explore perhaps uh, camping in Malaysia because we do have nature's beauty, or if you're interested in hiking and also to, to explore more about the nature. We, all, we also have a uh, different aspect of uh, tourist uh, places that we want to offer to the youngsters, not only that you could come for the, natures, uh, for the nature, but of also you could come to Malaysia and enjoy, uh, of course I'm going to say it again, shopping, not only for only the, uh, the, old, the elders, but for the youngsters as well. And uh, there are different things in Malaysia that you ca could explore as well. If you're into you know, trying something of uh, extreme sports, we also have that in Malaysia. And uh, Malaysia is one of the best snorkeling um, area. We have that in Sabah. So uh, that is also one of the uh, attraction that, uh, if I could recall, one of the attraction that uh, the youngsters might come to Malaysia to, to enjoy themselves with. Besides food, of course. Okay, so it is not a problem for millennial and Z generation to come to Malaysia. There are many things you can do there, right? Um, okay, Steve, may these questions also go to 
Pa Asano because Japan is also, uh, yes, I think, uh, German is also a very attractive place for a yes, millennial, course. right? Yes. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, regarding about Japan, I think many people think Japan is a very expensive city and country. But it is not quite true because uh, we are kind of exper uh, experiencing a deflation in, in economic uh, of Japan. So I think uh, many people can enjoy a lot of uh, things in, in Japan. And you can go to restaurants, you can go sightseeing in many places in Japan. And, and the one thing that we uh, focus on right now is we are now providing halal restaurant in order to invite more Muslim people to Japan. So we are now uh, uh, ready for, uh, to invite many uh, people from uh, other countries. And um, uh, it's not, it doesn't depend on culture or religious uh, identities. So I think we, you, you guys can enjoy a lot of uh, things in Japan. Um, yeah, in Japan too. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, Pa Asano, I have a question since you say that. It is not really true that uh, uh, Japan, it is not very expensive or this is not expensive for the people to go to the Japan since we have very uh, young generations here from uh, North Sumatra University. Give applause for the students from North Sumatra University. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming to this forum. But would you please tell us, just say one time for eating, just say for lunch or breakfast, how much that we have to spend in Indonesian rupees, please. Uh, my, uh, my pocket is very long. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe for lunch in Tokyo, maybe you can spend uh, maybe 700 or 800 uh, yen. So that means uh, maybe drapan puru ribu or toji puru ribu rupiah. You can, you can eat enough food in okay. Tokyo. And of course, it, it depends on uh, uh, other cities. Especially Tokyo is very expensive compared to other cities because it's a, it's a metropolitan city. But if you choose many uh, different places in Japan, you must, you can, I, I, I'm pretty sure you can enjoy a lot of foods out there okay. yeah, by spending maybe Derapampur or Tujupur yeah, okay. yeah. So starting from now for you, millennial, the students, Save your money. It is only seventy thousand to eighty thousand for one time lunch, and Pat Clement Gultom will provide you the provide ticket what? to Japan, right, Pat Clement? <laughs> <laughs> yes. On. Yes. Of course, we provide. <laughs> <laughs> How much? How much for one package, Pat Clement? Uh, just depends. say, j just say, one week traveling. Even two weeks. Even two, or weeks. Even two okay. weeks. But of course, there is a requirements on that. Just say the, the low, the low ones, the lowest one. <laughs> the requirements. <laughs> okay. 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 For students, enough. One million, two million, three millions. Uh, out of the air ticket, because air ticket is out beyond my control. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's um, five to six million. It's already very good. Okay, five to six million students. You need how many semesters to to you know to save this money? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, what about in uh, Malaysia? It was Isa before I come to uh, Pak Daniel. Meaning the food or the, the food? Uh, food first, and then we talk about the accommodation. Uh, sure, sure. Um, so in case you don't have the patience to you know like save your money for like one year. Perhaps you can come to Malaysia because uh, for <laughs> lunch, actually, you can get a uh, var variety of choices by only bringing like perhaps 50,000 of, of rupiah for one meal of uh, during lunchtime. So that is around like what, 15 ringgit? And that is actually uh, very good enough, actually. Okay. Uh, so for student, if you only have like 30,000 rupiah to spend for lunch, I'll have suggestions for you and we also have good uh, food that you could enjoy. That is the estimation uh, for you to spend in Malaysia on food. But as for uh, flight tickets, as we are talking now, I know that flight tickets is not very price friendly at the moment because yes. they just open up, right? But uh, for Malaysia, I would happily say that uh, with 2 million, you could buy a ticket to Kuala Lumpur or Penang back and forth for one person. 
and of course we would uh, welcome you to Malaysia with a uh, variety of uh, fun and entertainment besides the food that I mentioned earlier. Okay, thank you very much. Pua Jija, Pa Daniel, uh, same questions? Yeah, uh, for the, uh, if you want to get something uh, to eat there as a student, actually uh, you can, uh, the range between 75,000 rupiah until 100,000 rupiah, you can get a meal, a proper meal there in, uh, in Germany. And um, if you want to go there, actually it's a bit cost about the flight, uh, most 20 million probably in the whole round. Uh, to and back from Germany. So yeah. it seems that the flight is the problem, right? Uh, yep. Not the food. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> yes, Steve? Yeah, of course. By the way, because this is about the diplo the event is called Diplomatic Forum, there should be something related to diplomacy or the cooperation between nations. And here with us, the chairman of ASEAN Bilateral Committee, Bapak Parlindungan Purba. So, in here with us, Pak Parling Parpalin, still with us? Sorry. I got a lot of stuff on my hands, sorry. Yes, thank you very much. So, sir, how do you see that ASEAN or even these countries, Japan, Malaysia, and Germany, can work together with Indonesia to recover the tourism? Okay, thank you very much. My name is Parlindungan Purba. I am now as the chairman of bilateral ASEAN in Chamber of Commerce Industry, Indonesia. I am very pleased to inform you that this year, G20 presidency is our Indonesia, our President Jokowi. And 2023, Indonesia will be hosting as ASEAN. So what we see that all the ASEAN countries has uh, to prepare themselves. For information that in Medan itself, in North Sumatra, in the tourism or health tourism, some hospitals have prepared to be the medical tourism uh, object here. Some hospitals that has been designed and informed by the Minister of Health Indonesia. That's one. And the second, uh, on the ASEAN side, we are very familiar with some uh, cultural similarization, what I say. For example, uh, talking about uh, tourism, I think there are some uh, factors behind this. It will follow by the investment. And what I know is mm, all of the investments investment come from the tourism first. Because the businessman will be friendly, what we say, and he feel safe, he wants to put the money in Indonesia. So hopefully this year and next year, uh, Indonesia itself will be growing up better, so recover st uh, stronger. Yes, we have some problems, infrastructure, but it is, I think, part of the, uh, the story to be there. And I think all nations in the world has problem uh, uh, during the COVID. But this year, since the borderless uh, tourism has been uh, developed better, it will be increased. And uh, second is, uh, we're talking about the object of North Sumatra, I say. Yeah, we have, uh, there are 10 sub, uh, sites of tourism. One is Lake Toba Resort. And the second, that is in Samosir Regency. So there are seven uh, regions among that, Toba, Dairi, Tapanuli, Utara, and something like that. And then Tangkahan Langkahat Regency, where there is Mr. Elephant. And then also Bukit Lawang, we send our family there, monkey. And I'll say Brastagi Karo Regency. And the other side, attractive tourism site will be Maimon Place in Medan. And then Muara Opu Beach, so South Tapanul Regency, Simalem Resort. And then Mursal Island in Central Tapanul Regency, Ponchan Island, Sibolga, Silesa Bungan. And there are many places that will be developed. So it means uh, in 2023 will be a competition among ASEAN countries. Since Indonesia will be hosting, I think uh, Indonesia will prepare uh, better for the infrastructure itself. And as mentioned before about the mindset, I think the tourism is not just uh, talented itself, but we must be, uh, what I mean, must be designed as maybe well-trained. 
and Indonesian, especially the governor of Sumatra, is very serious about this. All of, for example, in the uh, beginning in, uh, to develop infrastructure, I was previously as the member of Indonesian member of parliament as senators, 20, 2004 until 2019. If the government want to make the infrastructure the new road, the must condition is must be there is a tourism objective. So the government will support all the infrastructure where there is the side of uh, tourism. Because tourism not itself, there are some behind there. It's the locomotive. So that's my my opinion for from Asian sides. We are very serious to push the tourism. Thank you very much. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um before we go again to the floor, Steve. Yes. I would like to go back to Pawas. Okay, Pawas from the floor, from other panelists, we already hear what a very beautiful words about the infrastructure is there <laughs> and then the, 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 the magnet, the beauty of the North Sumatra is there. So now my question is how does ASITA okay, um, do to tell the people out there so they 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 will come to North Sumatra. They 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 believe that the restaurants we have here, the hotels we have here, are really prepared to welcome them. Uh, especially in terms of health protocols, because even the words is already say that oh we are okay the the, the pandemic is you uh, know is slowing now, but we still have. You know, uh, to be careful about that, right? Yes, please, Pawas. Thank you, Papani. Uh, maybe after my answer, that my colleague from Asita pa can. Clement? Pak Clement can uh, also answer this. But uh, from PIRE, <coughs> to regarding to the answer that question, what we must build is the trust. Yes, that's it, the trust. The trust. Uh, for analogy, uh, I, I trust and I believe RRE and Voice of Indonesia can help this such marvelous uh, forum. So uh, I can come here and you trust me to be a keynote speaker. You trust us to be a keynote speaker. That's trust. And the trust is visitors will have a positive impact in improvement and development of tourism in North Sumatra. And the trust will always carry out all the good protocols, have proper protocols, yes. and the Keselamatan Kerja Karyawan K3 uh, issued by ILO, and uh, uh, the certified qualified and attitude of the hospitality um, enthusiasts, activists, or workers. This must build the trust that visitors uh, expect from us. And uh, but don't forget that we must prioritize and emphasize uh, the hospitality awareness. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, what is the hospitality awareness? It's the act of hospitality, act of politeness uh, to assist others, to help others, especially the visitors come to our country, to our province in North Sumatra. And we should continuously apply that in all aspects, supporting tourism in North Sumatra. This, I believe the hospital awareness should be our face in Indonesia, especially in North Sumatra. The hospitality awareness must be our trademark, our brand, that when uh, foreigners 
remember that when we when they hear Indonesia, they uh, they feel our hospitality, our warm hospitality, uh, and we uh, this should be the uh, basic element to build the trust from the visitor to come visit North Sumatra. Uh, maybe that's my answer. Okay, I would like to have a, to continue the, the, the next questions was as mentioned by Pak Agus later that uh, we'll call a labor or human resources, professional human resources. We have to have in order to make people feel the hospitality and trust us, so they come here. So, how professional do you observe the human resources we have here, especially in North Sumatra, in doing their works in hotels and restaurants? Please. Regarding for that, uh, we have a very big homework for human resources in North Sumatra. That's why we must have a, a proper education for the hospitality, for the hoteliers, the, all restaurateurs and tourism. Mm -hmm. We must uh, build the character of our nations uh, through the, uh, the through the, our people and uh, the hospitality workers, uh, activists, or enthusiasts must be certified, must be qualified, and plus a good attitude. Yes. There's no such thing uh, certified and qualified. If you don't have a good attitude, the trust will crumble down. Yes, of course. That's, uh, for me, uh, fuse the uh, the human resources uh, uh, element in North Sumatra is a big, big homework part. But uh, we trust that we could build it, and it's not late for that. Okay, thank you. What was Steve? Yes. Just wait, okay? Be patient. Uh, since we have here the Annary Council of Timor Leste, Bapa Irwansa. Pak Irwansa, yes. Uh, can you share, Pak Irwansa, the tourism sector in Timor Leste at this time with our panelists and the forum here, please? Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, you mean uh, I explain a little bit about uh, tourism in Timor Leste? Yeah, since yeah. The, the, the borders is open now, yeah. okay, so what is the situation of tourism there in yeah. uh, Timor Leste? Okay, please. thank you. Uh, for the situation, Team Leste now uh, is, is very safe. So the information when uh, COVID and a lot of uh, barrier from another country, and that's why not so many tourists can come to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. I think in uh, 2020, mm -hmm. uh, Team Leste become the biggest a tourist come to Indonesia <laughs> because the land border still open. Yes. Yeah, uh, but in Timor Leste, uh, a little bit similar same uh, situation with North Sumatra, especially uh, some area like Brastagi, Kabanjahe, Danau Toba, and also for some information, uh, we have the same culture from uh, North Sumatra, especially Batak, uh, with Timorese. Yeah. What 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 is yeah. what culture that we have the culture. same part? same like like my you know my clothes yes yes uh, okay. we call this ties maybe a little bit like uh, ulos ah see uh, we also eat siri like kabanjahe yeah we also have coffee very famous Timor coffee yes very low acid and the surprise is the secret is the ancient of the coffee Timor coffee the seed is from Samosir. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very we, close. Yeah. yeah. Very close. Yeah. <laughs> and we so we also have a, a mixed marriage, especially when the beautiful girl from Karo, <laughs> Otoba. Yes. 
and a lot of our minister start in Indonesia and I surprised because one of our minister is the minister of transport communication uh, before his position when uh, we still name Timor Timor yes. is in Dinas Kehutanan five years <laughs> now become the minister <laughs> okay see and he has a stepfather the family name is Si Hombing ah. live in Pasar Merah wow yeah and I think in December 2016 uh, one six one of our elder from Medan pa, LA Nainggolan uh, come to celebrate Christmas in Dili Timor Leste and he make our leader Pak Sanada Gusmau become like a Ketua Suku oh, <laughs> okay. of Watak people in Timor Leste that's why we are a uh, very interesting, uh, especially Timorists, to uh, visit Indonesia. Only the problem is connectivity. That's why a few years ago, uh, we try hard, we fight uh, with Kemenko Indonesia and the government of Timor Leste, and we success to have the first commercial flight. Before it's a charter flight, commercial flights from Garuda. We already find the problem, and Garuda decide to send CityLink because the problem uh, with the uh, airplane uh, size yeah, and the price of the ticket uh, it's very good price okay. but uh, it's very sad after one year I don't know what happened okay. with the management of Garuda and the price become expensive again uh, See. but what uh, I hope in the future that the government, maybe the local government, government of North Sumatra, the government company like uh, Garuda, the central government, we can have maybe at least the title connecting flight from Medan to Timor Leste. Okay. Yeah, because uh, we still have maybe about 200, 300 Timorese here yeah, that have a wife from uh, Indonesia and also maybe about 600 people, ex team team, before they work in Timor Leste and now here. And also, we hope that if we have a connecting flight, we can increase the, the export, export import, uh, especially the cargo. Because usually, when before COVID, we send a lot of uh, things from Bali uh, with cargo, airline cargo. Especially, uh, example like flowers, fresh flower, uh, chicken, yeah. And because the container cost from uh, Indonesia to Timor Leste is very very expensive like now is about 2000 US dollar from Surabaya for 20 feet that's why I hope can have a connecting flight from Medan so we can use the airline uh, cargo uh, okay uh, to push the uh, the export but I think uh, Timor Timor and North Sumatra is very close that's why we also hope we can be a part at least to uh, recover st stronger together for okay. North Sumatra tourism. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Pak Irwansa. And since uh, the director of Voice of Indonesia is here, Pak Irwansa, I will propose to him that this diplomatic forum one day will be in Delhi. <laughs> okay, Steve? Yes. Actually, for the audience, oh, it, okay, I lost the signal down there, but here is okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I have this for everyone who will ask the question. To what is that, our Steve? Speaker. No spoilers, please. Oh, please. Okay. So basically, we have five people who are eager to ask. I would like to start from this one. Excuse me. You want to ask a question? Please state your name and also your uni university. Hello. My name is Muhammad Hadin Munte. Muhammad. Muhammad Hadin Munte. Okay, Radin Munte. From University North Sumatra. My question, as young people, we want to contribute to the development of Indonesia tourism. The cult we do it. How could we save our country so that for region your travel see Indonesia as a good place to visit? To Sir Melky was. Thank you. Okay, Pa Melky was. Did you get the point? 
uh, from uh, Muhammad Kadin Radin Munte. C can you repeat once? Can repeat the question, please. As young people, we want to contribution to the development of Indonesia tourism. Okay. How could we do it? How could we solve our country so that for region your travelers see Indonesia as good place to visit? Okay. What so this is again about trust, pa was so how you can uh, give the trust to the people to come to Indonesia, especially North Sumatra. Uh, I already uh, said before is trust. Trust that will always carry out continuously, not just one time, not just today or tomorrow or day after, but continuously to make this uh, tourism industry sustainable. Because this is uh, this is vulnerable, yeah, Pak. Uh, actually, it is vulnerable, vulnerable yes. uh, uh, industry. Mm -hmm. But we could. Uh, make the sustainable to uh, continuously carry out all the good protocols such as health, a safety, and as I said before, the politeness, a good attitude uh, from all hospitality uh, industry, all hospitality workers, enthusiasts, and activists and the hoteliers, the restaurateurs, the travel agents. Not just we are in the, in the area of uh, serving people, but the hospitality must touch the grassroots. Police officer, the parking man, the MSME or MKM. Yes. The lot of people must know what the hospitality awareness. Once the visitors uh, knows that our hospitality, the good hospitality, they will come to our country. They will visit our province. They will visit our Lake Toba, a piece of heaven from God. So, as I said before, build trust, build education uh, in hospitality, and give, uh, we must uh, collaborate to uh, each other to build this industry. Uh, by doing that, we hope that visitors come to our country, not just the foreigners, but locals, national and regionals. And then we hope that uh, uh, North Sumatra will embrace uh, and revive, uh, become the recovery, more stronger in tourism industry. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, Muhammad Radin, where are you? Did you get the point? So you can take part in this, yes, as a student, right, Pawas? Okay, to be a polite person, polite students, serving the people coming to North Sumatra, okay? Uh, make them feel the hosp uh, hospitality while they are here. Yes, Muhammad Radin? Can you hear me? Show me you. Stand up. Where please. are you? Stand up. Stand up, please. Uh, oh, you are. Yes, yeah. oh, You are handsome. I'm understand. You are handsome. You can do this. I yeah. believe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next, Steve. Yeah, we have the second questioner from over here. Hello. Please stand up. Show your smile to the camera. Your name. Your question, please. Thank you. My name is Indah Pratiwi Tanjung. I am a tourism lecturer in University of North Sumatra. Mm. Mm. Uh, from my experience, I have been live uh, in Russia for three years. Wow. So, yeah. So in fact, there are 70 percent uh, local people like to travel within the country during the pandemic and post-pandemic. Um, 
the, because they don't uh, because they don't need to get vaccination status because they don't have uh, difficult travel regulation in this country. So they don't need to have uh, COVID-19 status vaccination, uh, PCR, te PCR test and something like that. While in Indonesia, as we know, uh, we have many uh, travel regulation, travel requirements uh, for local people to travel within the country. For example, like uh, we need to have uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccination status and PCR test or something like that. So my question is, how's your travel requirement, especially for Japan, Malaysia, and Germany, uh, for local people to travel within the country? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think we start from Pa Asan Lovers. Okay, um, thank you for the question. Uh, regarding on the tra travel requirement to Japan, we are still uh, implementing uh, 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 well many uh, travel requirements, uh, especially for the PCR test. Uh, in order to enter uh, Japan, you have to take a uh, PCR test before the uh, before the entrance of Japan, and it was about uh, it was 72 hours before the entrance of Japan. So you have to show the negative uh, results of PCR test and in order to uh, yeah, get entered Japan. And after that, uh, uh, Indonesia is, is regarded as uh, uh, having low uh, patient of, uh, of uh, co uh, COVID-19. So Indonesian people, or especially Indonesian people, they, they, can, they don't have to uh, go to quarantine uh, process in Japan. So the only thing you have to do is you have to take PCR test and show negative result at the uh, at the airport of Japan, and then you can uh, you can enjoy uh, tourism out there. And as for tourism, we are uh, individual tourism is uh, is still under uh, discussion uh, of uh, Japanese government. And what we are allowed to uh, to enter Japan is that those uh, tourists who have uh, joined package tourism under the uh, travel agency in Japan. So if you have interest in going to Japan as a tourist, you have to, uh, well, you have to consult with the Japanese tra travel agency and join the uh, travel package in order to get uh, enter the uh, entrance of Japan. Thank you. Okay, before uh, Ibu Aziza answers, I, I, yes, Pa Asano. Uh, so they should consult with the um, Japan's tour and travel agencies. So there should be in package. So someone individual cannot visit Japan. Is that you mean? Yes. Um, individual tourists is still under discussion. Okay. So they are not uh, allowed yet mm -hmm. to enter Japan. Mm -hmm. But those people who have already joined package tourism mm -hmm. uh, with a Japanese travel agency, they can they can enter Japan okay. as a tourist. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Ibu Aziza. Uh, thank you, Pak Dalat, and thank you, Bu Inda, for the question. First of all, I just would like to say nobody is safe from Pak Dalat. Just now, I envy Pak Irwan Shah because he was not here at the stage with us. But now, I feel relieved because he already has gotten some, you know, on-the-spot kind of like questions. So I'm like, we are fair now, you know, equal uh, standing now. Uh, so back to the question before I answer Bu Inda's question just now. Uh, a show of hand, who has visited Malaysia at least once in their lifetime. Anyone? Students? Anyone? No? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, show of hand, please. I would like to see your hands. Who have been to Malaysia? We have there. Yes. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> I see you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much because obviously we are not doing that well with the teenagers or maybe teenagers have yet to make their way to Malaysia. But of course, uh, what Bu Indah mentioned just now is another thing that we need to look into, which is travel regulations or requirement to enter a country. In the first place, I always believe that uh, I always, always believe that country has their 
uh, discretion or their own jurisdiction of how they want to uh, control or uh, try to admin administratively, try to, to you know put into implementation some of the rules. So that goes without saying. And of course, uh, the country's readiness itself to uh, maybe receive some uh, tourists, especially during the pandemic uh, um, period that we are having previously in two years' time. Um, so back to the question. Um, the ease of coming, tourists coming into Malaysia, I would say it goes without saying because, as I mentioned earlier, Indonesia is one of the highest number of tourists coming into Malaysia. In fact, if I could share with you, in 2022, just after we opened our border in April 2022, we already received 270,000 of Indonesian coming into Malaysia uh, for tourists, uh, uh, I mean for tourism. So that itself is a proven fact that uh, coming to Malaysia is easy now, especially once we have lis lifted uh, the need for you to present PCR tests. Uh, but now, of course, you still have to show your uh, booster and yes. so on. Yes. We still have that in place. But uh, we believe that we are still improving as we go along. Now we already improve, uh, meaning to say we already consider COVID-19 as endemic. Mm -hmm. So now for tourists to come into Malaysia, as I mentioned the numbers earlier, uh, those are facts that we could not ignore. Um, and of course, uh, if we are dealing with a virus like COVID-19, so this is something that goes beyond border. So that also we need to look into the matter carefully. But of course, if we are looking into other aspect, which is the ease of travelers coming into Malaysia, for ASEAN especially, we have visa free for 90 yes. days. Yes. So uh, I believe that is one of the things that uh, we strive to improve and we already put into place uh, to assist, I would say, the possible tourists to make their decision easier. Okay. Either you want to come into Malaysia or the other countries. So these are some of the aspects. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, nobody is safe from you. Uh, Bapa, so just in case you need to further, you know, ask more question, my boss, Consul General, is here. <laughs> if I may <laughs> offer him, okay. so in case, you know, if you need somebody to grill on or the next uh, victim, uh, I would offer him as well. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, boss. Okay, boss. <laughs> yeah, since I have a privilege, Pa, to ha raise a question. Um, before this uh, diplomatic forum, we, we have another diplomatic forum before then, and we invited the uh, director of Malaysian tourism to the forum. Uh, his name is Pak Junus. Pa Junus. And we have a discussion about uh, the uh, Malaysia wants around 800,000 Indonesian tourists to visit Malaysia in uh, one year. But the problem is about the airline. Since that, less uh, when uh, yes, there are many Indonesian visiting Malaysia, but Malaysian we have less Malaysian visiting Indonesia. So th there should be a, a a problem for the the airlines. So what is the improvement from the situations? Just say last one semester to this day to this present pa uh, sorry pa do we, do we have a microphone sorry to put my boss into the spotlight <laughs> you give the privilege <laughs> i know I, 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 I need to pay my respect to him in that sense sorry pa <laughs> thank you pa daulat Aziza, uh, <laughs> 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 you put me on spotlight. Eh? <laughs> anyway, uh, you were asking about the uh, the connectivity. Yes. Uh, how? What is the the current development? Was that your your question? That's right, Payus. Uh, I think in Jul uh, uh, now is September. I think uh, last month. Uh, I think Batia has launched a new uh, connection. Uh, from KL to, for, sorry, from Kuala Namu to KL, uh, daily flights. So aside from the Air Asia and Malaysia Airlines that are also uh, flying currently uh, from KL to Kuala Namu, 
you you do have also flights from uh, Kuala Namu to Penang. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, Citilink, uh, Air Asia, and another one is I think Batik Air is opening up. Yeah, Batik Air is opening. Uh, we are also currently waiting for the um, uh, re connect, uh, reconnection from Aceh. Aceh also is opening up. I think I heard the car, uh, latest will be in November. So Aceh to KL and Penang. Maybe they will also uh, first uh, to Penang and then uh, also from uh, Pe uh, Pekanbaru. Pekanbaru now we have connection uh, through uh, Pekanbaru to Dumai. Yeah, uh, they are there are daily uh, daily um, uh, daily sh daily schedule. Uh, that's the current situation. So we are still waiting. Uh, what are the uh, flights coming in? I think Mas also is uh, cont uh, try to uh, reinitiate the daily flights. Currently, they have only uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so three flights a week. I think that's uh, the current development part, Daulat. Okay, so there is a very you know improvement to the flights. Okay, since Pa Daniel have an answer about the requirements, sorry, Pa Daniel, making you waiting for that, uh, please. No problem. Uh, first of all, Germany are still not open yet for tourism mm. uh, because uh, they say that the uh, uh, most important thing is, is the family visit first, and then for the medical. Uh, necessary and also um, for fares so the the business can run but the tourism not yet mm -hmm. they still need uh, have some time I think because um, the pandemic um, in Germany itself it's not mandatory to show your vaccination mm -hmm. but in public transportation for example you still have to use the FFP uh, second, so uh, the mass always mm -hmm. in the public transportation is mandatory. Okay, I think this is a very followable information, especially for for Pa Clement because he will send some tourists to Germany, to Malaysia, and also to Japan. But okay, I believe that there are still many things that we can discuss this to make you no know, Sumatra tourism recover stronger. But my producers already say. So, what I did now, a closing statement from each panelist. But Clement, are you ready for that? Yes, yes please. So, uh, for bringing tourism business, tourism industry into the next level, everyone that plays in not only in the tourism industry, actually, the, we have to develop our field, we have to develop our work at our best because making tourism as one of the leading industry is building your own job making your own work at your best not only for tourism let's say you are a normal businessman do your best at your business that's how you make the tourism so and the tourism itself, like uh, Pawa say, it's about trust. But for me, it's about comfort zone. Try to adopt somebody else's comfort zone for them to come to our place. Thank you. Thank you, Father Clement. Yes, Pawas. Uh, for closing statement, maybe. I should bring this I mentioned before is hospitality and trust and we have uh, built uh, the education in hospitality and we must from now on emphasize and uh, the, the hospitality insert ourselves to others assisting others yeah, because hospitality one month's way uh, to show you care and love to others. That's the hospitality for me. Yes, and uh, for the for that, I believe the tourism industry in North Sumatra will increase 
will recovery will be stronger than before the pandemic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pak Was. Pak Asano. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for giving me this valuable opportunity to discuss uh, tourism in uh, especially North, uh, North Sumatra province and Japan. And um, Japan is waiting for you guys uh, as, a, as a tourist. And, uh, and as I said, uh, hospitality is very important. And then tourism is, uh, is regarded as one of the uh, strategic uh, pillar of uh, Japanese uh, government policy. So we are very much excited to see uh, Indonesian tourists and people in Japan and enjoying a uh, body of uh, variable time in Japan. And thank you for an uh, invitation today. Thank you. Yeah. And Ibu Aziza. Uh, thank you. So I'll try to make it quick and short, I hope. So the first one, just to tap on our uh, topic today on recovering stronger for North Sumatra. I believe the government has been doing a good job at this uh, promotion. First of all, I would say the efforts have been multifaceted and very creative. I've been to Bukit Lawang Trail Run, so that is one of the aspects that North Sumatra is currently offering and maybe previously offering So through sports. Uh, as a diplomat, I would say that is sports diplomacy. So that is one of the area that I would say North Sumatra has been doing very good. And in fact, my uh, Consul General has been to, to Nias, like what Bapak mentioned, to enjoy surfing uh, international event. So that is to show our uh, support to North Sumatra local governments as well. And uh, we also see potential in the cultural aspect of North Sumatra uh, tourism, for instance, that uh, because you, um, North Sumatra is rich in culture and we are somehow connected. So that itself is also historically, there is a connection between Malaysia and Indonesia, specifically for North Sumatra. So all in all, I would say that the efforts by the North Sumatra uh, local government and, and of course by Indonesian government has, has been very vast. And uh, I would say this facilitate our job as a diplomat here uh, as well because um, it makes that our narrative would be better. Mm -hmm. So more investment might come in. And in fact, a uh, Malaysia company has already invested in one of the... Um, we, we already have an MOU and we already invested in one of the building of the sports center for PON 2023. So that is uh, more to see of the potential that North Sumatra has, not only uh, in one aspect of the tourism, uh, but also in other aspects. And as for Malaysia, I would say that Malaysia has a lot to offer. I'm not trying to say that one country is better than others, but I'm trying to say that explore, enjoy, travel, because as uh, a person, you need to see the world. You need to go beyond your comfort zone, like what Bapa mentioned earlier. So I would say that if you want something of uh, affordability, Malaysia has it. And if you want something of a quality, we do offer that as well. Uh, we offer you safety as well. And for hospitality, it's one of the best known hospitality as well. Uh, and in fact, uh, our medical tourism, is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the sought after um, area yeah. that we are tapping into more. So that being said, I would also like to invite uh, all of you to our Malaysian uh, Health Tourism Council Expo, which will be ongoing since uh, 22nd until 25th of September in uh, Center Point, Medan. So if you have any interest to come to Malaysia for uh, health screening and so on, then that is the place that uh, all of you should go to. I mean, with that, uh, I think, uh, thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Okay, pa Daniel. For me as a German as a representative, uh, I see that the effort that we has been done from the government of Sumatra Utara is very good because I just a few weeks ago, I just see that a uh, new app is coming regarding tourism in North Sumatra, in Sumatra, uh, Aja, they call it like that. Inside of this app, there will be a lot of hotels and a lot of destination that we can see in, uh, in the app, but it still need to be improved regarding all the hotels I just saw. It's only three hotels inside, so it need more to be uh, completed because I knew a lot of hotels are here in, in North Sumatra or here in Medan 
um, yeah, need still need to be improved. Needs you to be improved. Yes. Okay, this w this will be a note for Pak Clement and also Pak Was, I think. Okay, thank you very much, Pak Daniel. Okay, very good applause for them. Our panelists on the floor and also, I mean, on the floor and also on the stage. Honorable guests, listeners, and ladies and gentlemen. The pandemic has destroyed the lives of many people, including those who rely the lives on tourism sectors, our parts. And for that, we need to work together, not only for Indonesian, but also for our brothers and sisters from Japan, from Malaysia, from Germany, from Timor-Leste, and other parts of the world. We cannot recover and even make it stronger if we do not work together. So do we agree from this time, this day, to work together to make our tourism sector, which relates to our own lives, to make better and stronger. If you say yes, please give me a very big applause. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So we need to work together to revive tourism sector while maintaining our environment. We need to build but the environment still have to be safe. So we and our children can have a better life, a better, better life in the future. This is not only this planet, it's not only belongs to us, but also to our children, grandchildren. So, as illustrated in the song, Heal the World, song sung by Sonia Tampu Bolon, let's please work together and heal our worlds to have a better life in the future. Sonia Tampu Bolon. Your heart, and I know that it is slow in this place, too much brighter than tomorrow. And if you really try, you'll find there's no need to cry in this place. You feel there's no hurt or sorrow. There are ways to get there if you care enough for the living. Make a little space, make a bed of bliss. Sing together. Make it a bed of bliss for you and for me. There are people dying. If you care enough for the living, make a bed of bliss for you and for me. Can we st stand together? If you want to know why There's a love that cannot lie Love is strong There only cares for joyful giving If we try, we shall see In this place we cannot feel Fear of dread We stop existing and start living Then in Feels that always love enough for us growing. Make a better world to make a better world. See it till the world. Make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you 
will care enough for the living Make a better place for you and for me And the dream you are conceiving will reveal a joyful face And the world we once were living will shine again in grace Then why do we keep struggling like would this earth crucified its soul? Though it's planned to see the world is heavenly, be God's glory. In my heart, I feel you are all my brothers. Create a world with no fears. Together we cry happy tears. See the nation turn their sword into plowshares. Then it feels that always love enough for us growing. Make a better world to make a better world. Make it a better place for you and for me. And the entire human race there are people dying if you carry not living make a better place for you and for me heal the world make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race there are if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Once more, there are people dying. If you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. You and for me. You and for me. You've just listened to Diplomatic Forum, broadcast by RRI World Service, Voice of Indonesia. Best. Okay, All right. Steve. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Diplomatic Forum, and of course, we will invite the speakers to move you in into the front Thank of the stages yeah. because we would like to give some souvenirs from Voice of Indonesia to our guest speaker for today's event. So please, the speakers, go to in front of the stage, please. And I would like to invite the director of Voice of Indonesia, Bapak Soleman Yusuf, and the director of RRI Medan, Bapak Agung Prasetyo Umar to come to the front and to hand over the souvenirs for our dearest speakers. And one more, we would like to invite the expert staff of North Sumatra's governor, Bapak Agus Tri Priyono to come to in front of the stage. Just continue. Next, please. Thank you. The next one, please.
Okay. Okay. I'd like to invite Bapak Daulat Paine to join into in front of the stage because we would like to take a memorable picture together. Hmm? Okay. So we would like to invite every honored guest of today's event from Timor Leste, Bapak Irwan Shah. Fr from the Chairman of ASEAN Bilateral Committee, Pak Parlindungan, to come into in front of the stage. And also the Council of Malaysia. Mr. Ayub, to join us, please. <laughs> what? Four. Four. Take a picture. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, I think we would like to have one more picture because our singer Sonia Tambu Bolon would like to join us <laughs> in the middle. Yeah. The center of attention. All right then. Now, so, okay, another pose. By the way, yeah. All right then, ladies and gentlemen. There is a surprise from the North Sumatra Governor's expert staff. Agustri Priyono, who has actually a souvenir for Voice of Indonesia to be received by Papa Soleiman Yusuf. Applause for everybody in front of the stage, for the speakers, for Soleiman Yusuf, and everybody joining in this event. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the diplomatic forum for today. By the way, on the right side of you, you can see several foods that you can enjoy today. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the diplomatic forum. Thank you very much for coming and listening. See you next time. Yang dari kita ada kotaknya gitu.